Today in Mackie Tech, we're going to be asking the all-important question that is, is this Orange Pi 5 Pro a good alternative to the Raspberry Pi 5? We're going to be re reviewing both boards, doing a hardware comparison, and then we're going to load some operating systems on the Orange Pi Pro, do some benchmarks, uh, test the software, and then we're going to talk about community support, documentation, and we're going to talk about something a little bit concerning about the Orange Pie's website. So stay tuned. So if we put both boards side by side, uh, they look similar. Uh, they both have a one gig Ethernet port here. They both have four uh, USB ports. They both have a five volt power supply right here that's the orange pie that's uh, raspberry 5 and they both have micro sd and uh, they also have uh, 40 pin gpios they're actually in the same orientation they're the same layout which is always helpful uh, and that's kind of where the similarities end you know for the orange pie 5 it has a 64-bit uh, rock chip rk3588s which is an eight core CPU. Uh, it actually has two four core uh, Cortex chips. One is actually the same as the 64 bit core chip A76 that's part of the Raspberry Pi's uh, Broadcom system on a chip here. And that's the BCM2712 system on a chip. And the other four cores of the Orange Pi are actually an, an, an A is an Apple 55 uh, Cortex, Cortex. I don't know why I can't say that today. Um, but that is more of an efficiency core. And the other one, uh, the A76, is a uh, performance core. And both of these uh, CPUs, both the uh, Raspberry Pi and the Orange Pi 4, uh, run at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, for the RAM, the Orange Pi board has 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5. It's also available in 4 and 8 variants if you want to get uh, different types of RAM in there. For the Raspberry Pi, uh, the one I have has 8 gigabytes. That's available in 2, 4, 8, and 16. As I mentioned for the internet, they both have the 1 gig Ethernet port, and they both have... Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. For HDMI, the Orange Pi has uh, two full-sized HDMI ports. Thank you very much because I hate the micro ones. For the HDMI, the Orange Pi actually has two full-size HDMI ports, uh, which I really do appreciate them having those. The right one that is closest to the Ethernet port is uh, this one here. This one is a HDMI a 2.1 and theoretically it can do 8k at 60 fps and the other one is a 2.0 port and that one runs at 4k at 60 fps uh, the pi as we all probably know has these uh two micro hdmis and they both run at uh two they're both 2.0 ports and in my in my opinion they're they're just too delicate to mess with i've um wrecked a couple of those in my in my past uh, tinkering so I always prefer the uh, the full-size ones for USB the orange Pi has three 2.0 ports these white guys here and it has one 3.2 port uh, while the Pi in contrast has two 2.0 ports and two 3.0 ports. For audio, the Orange Pi has a, a port right here for your uh, speaker inputs or headphone jack. And the Raspberry Pi, the, the actually the Raspberry Pi 5 release, uh, they chose to eliminate that from the board. But it does have Bluetooth if you uh, want to hook up uh, Bluetooth headsets. For the Orange Pi, we have two uh, MIPI CSI ports for cameras, and they're both uh, quite small. There's one here and there's one over here. And then there's a DSI port right here that you can hook up a little ribbon cable and plug in a display for showing the time or weather or whatnot. And then you have on the bottom, you have your, your EMMC 
connections right here. And very interesting, also on the bottom, you have a 1M.2 NVMe. Uh, it's a one-lane PCIe 2.0 port. Those usually clock in at around uh, 500 megabytes a second, which is megabytes a second, which is still a little slow for NVMe drives, but uh, I did not have a spare NVMe drive in time for my video to get specific tests done, but I do plan on doing one in the future, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that fun. There are also some restrictions with this uh, NVMe drive uh, that we'll get into a little bit later. And then for the Raspberry Pi, we have two four-lane DSi or CSi camera ports. They're, more, they're both MyPi, I think that's how you pronounce that, MyPi, M-I-P-I -I ports, and a 116-pin uh, PCIe 2.0 port here, which is the same bandwidth as the Orange Pies. On the, and lastly, as we mentioned, we have a port for the optional EMMC module on the bottom of the Orange Pi. I did not order one with mine. Uh, I may in the future, I'm not sure yet, we'll see. This is a great option, but the challenge with it is it's taking the place of what's called SPI flash memory, uh, or it's a, what they call an SPI loader. It would actually fit right in here, and it doesn't come with one, or this board doesn't come with one. You can get them on other Orange Pi 5 boards. I'll put that in the link description with ones that you can, that does come with it, Otherwise, you got to solder one on. Now, your SPI flash is a type of what they call non-volatile RAM or short-term storage uh, that can be used for uh, storing boot data or an updating firmware. So the results of not having an SPI flash in here is that if you have an NVMe drive that you put in here, you can still use it, but you can't boot off of it. You would have to keep a SD card in here to boot or if you happen to have an EMMC module, you can also boot off of that. And that's different than the Raspberry Pi, which has uh, EEPROM memory. And that's what it uses for its booting. So you can boot off of an NVMe and you don't have to have your flash in there all the time. And then last few things of note here, we have our five volt fan connector, and then we have a connection for a, an RTC, a real time clock that you can connect batteries to so it maintains the clock kind of like a CMOS battery in case you don't have power plugged in. And on the top edge here you have your reset button that uh, little clicky click there that turns the power on and off or resets it. And now that we've reviewed both boards I'm going to be putting this Orange Pi 5 in this handy dandy little case here. It has a, uh, an active fan in it. I'm not going to record it. It's just a simple metal case. And I'm going to also put my Raspberry Pi 5 back in its respective case so we can do some testing and some benchmarks. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so here we are in the Orange Pi Droid release. We can see that we have, uh, if we go down and bring our mouse down to the bottom, we have our typical uh, time and date. Uh, we have our Wi-Fi indicator here that we're already connected to. We have a uh, option here for additional apps. And if we open that up, we have our calculator, camera, calendar, Chrome, uh, the typical stuff that you would find in the apps. This does not have a Google Play Store. The only thing I found was this little guy here and uh, everything's in Chinese, which isn't super helpful. You can download them, I guess. They do have little icons on them, so that's a little bit helpful. I instead decided to get Aptoid, which is a, another way you can access the uh, offerings of the App Store for Android. And I downloaded Geekbench and I did some tests already. It's Android 12, one processor, eight cores. This one is actually running at 1.8, two four core chips, as we had mentioned earlier. This is probably the A57, I'll correct that in the video if that's not right. And then this is the 2.26, this is the performance core, this is the efficiency cores. Here's our RAM. And for our single core score, we got a 549 and uh, make sure that that's correct. Yeah, 549 for the single core score. And then for the multi-core score, we got a 1905. And we are running uh, Geekbench 5, not Geekbench 6. 
And for the Raspberry Pi for comparison, I had a single core score average of 603 and a multi-core average of 1608. So the single core did a little better on the average and the multi-core didn't do so well, uh, which isn't surprising because the uh, Orange Pi has four more cores. And if we go to YouTube, let's start with uh, 1080p, turn on... Stats for nerds, you know, 1080p, it's not bad. Eight frames out of uh, 1600, one every couple uh, seconds here. So not bad. If we go full screen here, starting to get a little more. No, nah, that's actually not bad. That's very clear. It's very easy to watch. Not much problems. If we go to 1440, still pretty good. We're not dropping any frames. Maybe one or two, three or four here and there. Now, if we go to 4K, I know that we're gonna have a little bit of issue. Yeah, so now we're starting to get a little, some glitches, some slowdown. Yeah, we're dropping, dropping frames like flies here. So, <laughs> so now I'd like to go to fast.com. We're gonna take a look at the internet speed. And again, this is Wi-Fi 5, so it can use the five gigahertz band. Not bad, you know, 100 megabits is about right for real world speed. Okay, so that is on the Android. I mean, I like the Android. It's very responsive, it's very peppy. You know, it, it doesn't have a lot of lag. Everything opens up pretty quickly. Now let's move over to Ubuntu and see what, uh, what we have over there. Okay, we're gonna boot into Ubuntu. Okay, so that booted up in about six seconds which is pretty impressive for an SD card. Uh, I have to say, that's uh, pretty impressive. All right, so first let's go to, we go to Buck Bunny, and I'm anticipating we'll get the same score. I just wanted to like it, like to see which OS is better for this type of streaming. Stats for nerds, and let's see, we're at 1080p right now. So a little bit of drop frames here and there. Yeah, Ubuntu seems to be uh, a little bit dragging. Eh, it's, a, it's okay now, but it was kind of dropping frames a little bit in the beginning. It seems to be doing better now, but it's not great. It's still dropping frames, doing a lot worse than it was before on the uh, Droid. If I go to, let me go to 1440. So 1440, it's not doing bad one or two here and there. Yeah, this is actually playing a lot better than the 1080p. I think it was probably just a, just a buffering issue, maybe my internet, but um, this is playing a lot better. Okay, so now that we've done some benchmarks and we see the differences between the different OSs, let's take a look at their websites. Right now we're on the Orange Pi website. I like the website quite a bit. It's uh, very professional looking, it's easy to navigate, a lot of nice information about their different hardware devices, their different types of Orange Pi boards. You can select all the way back to the initial ones that they came out with, uh, Orange Pi Zero. It gives you information about the different types of cables and the different types of I.O. and cases you can get. So it's very helpful. It also has a forum. You can get some more detailed information about the different OSs. I'm not sure why that's not coming up, but oh well. The one concern I have, and I'm not sure why they haven't fixed it yet, but this site is not SSL encrypted. And the other concern is that forums is still loading. Okay, so here's forums. So forums is also not secured. I wouldn't be very excited about posting in the forums without encryption. Uh, maybe that's just me. Registering and sending over my password and my information to a non-encrypted site uh, makes me a little nervous. Other than that, uh, if we go back to the main site, the other challenge I ran into, so if I go to service and downloads and click on download, What's kind of neat is that you can download based on the board you have. And so I went over to the Orange Pi 5 Pro. It gives you the manual and here's the official images. If we go to the user manual, the user manual is uh, very thorough. I'll say that, you know, it's got, you know, almost 700 pages. The challenge I have with it is that if you go down to some of the pictures, okay, yeah. So some of these screenshots, um, they're in Chinese. So uh, that's not super helpful. 
I mean, it does walk through very clearly about, you know, what buttons to push and whatnot. And, you know, you can go into these, these files that you download and you can change the language preferences under the folders here. Uh, and that can help. But I mean, if you don't know how to do that, um, you're kind of stuck with the directions that they give you here. And it talks a lot about the EMC, the EMMC module and how it is replacing the SPI that we mentioned before. It tells you how to flash it in Belena. It's very good. It's very thorough with regard to what it shows you. It's just like I said, the screen captures being in a different language uh, makes it a little bit more challenging. If we go to Amazon and look at some pricing, the 16 gigabyte version, which is the one I have, is 128. Uh, it does not come with anything else. It just gives you the board. It doesn't give you any heat sinks, no power adapters, no case, none of that. The four gig version is $75 and the eight gig is $97. Again, that's just the board. If we look up the Raspberry Pi 5, the Pi board is $89. What I wanted to show is that there are a lot of kits that come with the Raspberry Pi 5. For an extra 40 bucks, you can get a case, an SD card, fan, get the power adapter. And I like having kits. I like having little bundles. Now, if we go to the Raspberry Pi site, there's really no comparison with respect to the amount of documentation, all of the community support. Its website is SSL encrypted. I mean, Raspberry Pi even offers its own OS flashing software for download for free. But what's also interesting is Raspberry Pi only has two years on Orange Pi. The first Pi was released in 2012 and the Orange Pi came out in 2014. But again, if we look at the hardware, both companies offer a slew of different options with respect to, you know, different compute modules. Even the Orange Pi came out with a keyboard similar to the Raspberry Pi 400. Both have options for cameras, both have other accessories. And we only discussed the Orange Pi Pro today. We just discussed one board. Obviously the Raspberry Pi has more, but as I mentioned, it's only had two years on it, but uh, it's up to you. And I'd like to hear what you think. But I think it's fair to say that if you're watching this video, you are more of a tinkerer than not. And maybe you're not always going to gravitate towards turnkey solutions. Having said that, do you prefer the Orange Pi Pro? Uh, it's more robust, it's faster, maybe not as many third-party options for cases or vendor support and documentation, or does the more affordable Raspberry Pi suit your needs? Let us all know in the comments uh, which board you're leaning towards if you're you know, have a completely different board in mind that you're using, and also let us know what you're using it for. If you found this video helpful, uh, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and that you are subscribed to Mac e Tech so you don't miss my next coming videos. One of them is going to be reviewing a completely different SBC board right here. And also before you go, don't forget to check out my Patreon page if you need any assistance with my tutorials, and make sure to check out these other Raspberry Pi videos here. Thank you again for watching and we'll be talking to you again very soon.